importance of souls on a large level that are here on the earth at this time. And some of those soul group families are working on the light side uh, to bring greater awareness to the realities that we face here on earth today. Why the world is as it is. And there are also other soul group families that are still working for the dark side. And we're not just talking about, you know, the, the royal family in England. We're not just talking about secret societies. We're talking about communities of humans that find other like-minded humans and they engage in trickery. They engage in invasion. They engage in theft. They engage in rape, okay? They engage in manipulating susceptible members of society to bend to their will and build something for them because they don't want to build it themselves. This is all about empire building. It's about moving into new areas and taking over whole countries, whole regions, and making the people slaves. We've seen this throughout history and is still continuing to this day. Where do these souls go? They're involved in all this wicked darkness. Where do the souls go that are working on behalf of the Creator? You see, if you are able to visualize in your mind's eye an omniverse as opposed to a universe being singular, omni instead of universe, uh, if we can picture a larger reality beyond this one with other planets, science is now confirming there are other planets that are capable and may already be harboring some form of physical life, be it humanoid or be it what we would identify to be alien or extraterrestrial. If we're able to picture that in our mind's eye, consider, consider taking a deeper look at the spiritual teachings that we have had access to for thousands of years. We're working, I believe, to get to that place. You know, you hear about the book, The New Earth, and, and things of that nature, but, but I'm looking at this like a new planet, a new reality, where the souls that have earned their right to get there incarnate in a better world, where we continue our evolution, because it's not going to end here. I mean, when I look at myself as much as I know, when I look at what we call, you know, some of the best um, speakers, leaders, and what we call the truth movement, uh, and also what we call, you know, the, the consciousness expansion movement and aspects of, of new age thought. I look at some of these souls that are speaking about some incredibly magnificent things. A, on a spiritual level, and B, you know, exposing incredible secrets uh, in the conspiracy research community. And I see souls that still have a long way to go to get beyond ego, to get beyond themselves, you know, to get beyond the me, 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 uh, to get beyond, you know, labeling the activities and, and um, the actions of others in their soul group family. You know what I'm talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. And we're not here on this earth to uh, promote our own egos, although there are many aspects of ego that are healthy where we create boundaries and we understand this is our space, this is our understanding, that is their space, that is their understanding. That could be considered a, a healthy understanding and application of the ego. Tap it into your own information. But the information is not ours exclusively. It's available here in the ether. It's in the air all around us. It's in us. God is in us and around us. It exists in all things. It's also been said that Lucifer is the shadow side of God, created by the Creator to be that balance, that, that yin and yang. Because in this physical reality, we have many lessons to learn. And some of the lessons deal with ceasing to support dominating structures or governments, the modern king, the new king that are robbing the people of their resources. And in many cases, this is even more important, their lives. Certainly that's the case when we look at Iraq and Afghanistan. 
But when we understand that this is not our information, it is information we are sharing, we are messengers, and that we need to love and we need to respect the information that others are presenting because they are here to do a specific purpose, as you are here to do a specific purpose. You are listening to this YouTube video because you're looking for some information to aid you. You're not simply looking for facts and figures and information uh, that relates to threats to physical survival. You're looking for information uh, that relates to the larger picture and how you can evolve at a quicker pace, how you can become as conscious as you possibly can be. And there's, there's many ways to meditate. You can ground yourself. You can partake in Vipassana meditation, which deals with observing your breath and becoming very equanimous and very aware, non-reactive, so you're able to keep your reactionary nature in check. Then there's, of course, deep breathing to get that, that key going, that internal energy, and the energy that exists in the air is is more significant than what most people realize. And when you focus on that energy in the air going in through either your mouth or your nose, it magnifies that. But consider this in your meditation practice. What it's like to be an enlightened master. What consciousness, true consciousness, going beyond the word and going to the realm that's beyond words. How can you match your energy at the moment in your meditation to this idea of your higher self manifesting in a profound way where you are there and then? And opening your mind opening your mind to concepts and ideas of course that come from the light and verbalizing that that you are only working with information from the light you are not open to working with other spirits or things of that nature uh, and that includes channeling and I'm not saying that some people aren't capable of channeling but in this context we are talking about you connecting with your higher self and matching where you're at now with a higher version of consciousness and putting that intent out there. And you don't exactly have to know what that's going to be like, but to direct your consciousness and your energy and your intent in that direction will yield you results. Because the more we talk about these things, the more it magnifies the energy itself. What we focus on increases. So I want people to open their minds to the best of the ability that this is not about what's going to be taking place 10 years down the line, 20, although there are many things I've talked about that are very significant that relate to life in this physical plane 10 years down the line, 20 years down the line. But this is just a part of the conversation. If we've lived before and we're able to, to tap into that and understand that and we see where we are now and we can tap in to why we're going through what we're going through, why the universe gives us certain challenges, why the universe at times uh, attacks us through those archonic forces which work through susceptible human beings that are not light energy wise, that are negative and tend to direct their attacks towards people on the spiritual path. And what I want to communicate to you is that if you understand what's going on and that we are moving forward, we are becoming more conscious individually when we direct our intentions in that manner, in that way, and that we are going to move and ascend to a better world as a result of our actions. When you can be in that vibrational space, there is hope and there is no fear of what's going to happen to your body. Are you going to end up getting locked up in a FEMA camp or, or addicted to some other fear of, of not surviving? 
I'm here experiencing, uh, I'm sharing my experience, strength, and hope as I continue to experience a very interesting life where I've done many things, I've traveled to many places, I've met many people, and I'm here in a place of solitude, which at times is challenging, and I go through the necessary work to center myself and understand why it is that I'm here. And to be grateful for this opportunity and be grateful for other times where there was some form of intervention, divine intervention, personally in my life at times where I needed that intervention, but was not capable at the time of intervening in my own life. There were times where other forces of light did. So I can see from those experiences that I was destined early on to embark on the path of truth and to share that knowledge with others in order to help them understand why things are the way they are here on earth and what we need to do to get out of what I believe is a quarantine prison for thieves, souls that have stolen or taken the energy from others. I've heard this concept mentioned for years and I've heard it recently from another uh, alternative media host, Mark Passio. And when you look at the actions and deeds of our ancestors, and you can look at where these generations are today and the struggles that we face, we can see direct evidence in the physical reality of cause and effect. We can prove it. We can document it. We can measure it. The soul level is a lot more complex. So, Remember, there are people out there that have incarnated into this reality that have done magnificent things with absolutely nothing. And there's a reason why these people are hated. There's a reason why people attack my work. There's a reason why there are people out there that aren't dead. And the answer is not that they're a, a government agent. There is control over control. There is a control over the dark forces that we think are controlling all of our lives and every aspect of our reality or our minds. Those are negative affirmations that you're under complete control and you have no power and you have no free will. Those that are negative affirmations and they have no basis in reality. The creative force of the universe. The ultimate creator is above Lucifer, is above Satan, is above El Diablo, is above the incarnate forces. And if we don't learn to rise above the temptations that his shadow self, the creator's shadow self, uh, has laid before us, we are going to continue going around and around and around in this, this abstract um, galaxy of souls until we get it right. If we want to be in a heavenly planetary world, if we want to be in a better place, if we want to live in a better world, then we have to work to make that world a reality. And we need to do that mindfully. And this is a very key part of doing this mindfully. You do what you do because doing it is the right thing to do. You don't do it because you think you're going to get something back. Because you think you're going to get some money. Because you think that somehow it's going to benefit you in the immediate term or even this lifetime. You do it because you know that every action that we take follows us. And that this is a part of something larger. That we do what we do selflessly regardless of of what we think is going to come back to us, including death, including our own physical survival being threatened. We do it because we have faith in the light, in something more powerful than the dark forces that aren't capable of generating their own light, dark forces that feed on the light of others.